Okay, in this video, we'll talk about what a fluid is and what distinguishes it from a non-fluid and the molecular structure that leads to the specific behavior of a fluid. So we are starting to look at fluid mechanics and broadly we are going to say fluid mechanics is composed of two distinct branches, let's say statics, where the fluid is at rest, and dynamics, where the fluid is, is in motion. And we'll look at each of these in turn. You've already done deformable body mechanics, so that's sort of solid mechanics, and uh, there you looked at stresses and strains in a solid body when it, was up, uh, when it was exposed to external forces. We're essentially going to do the same thing for a fluid. Um, now, because we are talking about a fluid, and as you will see, we will look at pressure distributions and so on, where gravity is always acting, you might have forces even when the fluid is at rest and when there's no motion, and we'll cover that in the next couple of weeks. But before all of that, let's talk about what a fluid is. So um, short answer, fluid is a thing that flows, and that's not very um, uh, rigorous, so let's look at what a solid is, and then we'll look at the other states of matter, liquid and gas, and um, a solid doesn't flow, liquids and gases flow, so short answer again, revised would be liquids and gases are fluids, and we'll talk about what specifically it is that makes them fluid. So if you look at a solid, its molecules arranged in a regular structure, often we think of uh, molecules as having strings, uh, springs in between them which transmit force, um, there's some kind of lattice, there are very, uh, well, there's very tight packing between the molecules of a solid and so a force applied to one molecule instantly gets transmitted to uh, all molecules and the whole solid might deform. When you talk about a liquid, there's greater interatom intermolecular spacing between molecules in a liquid. So there's attractive forces just like in a solid, but there's also uh, some freedom to move. So the, there can be relative motion between molecules. They can slip, slide past each other, but they are still in a liquid um, reasonably closely bound together. They aren't completely free of each other's influence. It's just that the interatomic or intermolecular spacing uh, is a bit larger than in a solid. And if you look at a gas, the molecules are far and free in between. Uh, they are sort of moving around on their own um, and they are not really encountering each other unlike in a liquid where despite being uh, slightly uh, spaced slightly far apart, the liquid molecules always feel the influence of the adjacent molecules, not as much as a solid, but they feel them nevertheless. Whereas when you talk about a gas molecule, they are completely on their own. They, they will, when they collide with each other is when they feel their in each other's influence, but the majority of the time, a mo gas molecule is on its own and is not ex um, exposed to external forces. As a result, when we look at the motion of, the, the response of liquids and solids to, uh, and gases to being put in a container. So if I have a container and I have solid pellets, let's say, of particular kinds, you can, they don't change their shape when you put them in a container. They just stay as they are. When you have a liquid, because these molecules can flow past each other, they can slip and slide past each other, a liquid will attain the shape of the container. It won't change its volume because it's still, the, these molecules are still bound together, but it will attain the shape of the volume. Whereas a gas, 
will have to be enclosed. And so if you have a piston cylinder arrangement or if you have just a uh, balloon, let's say you have a balloon, in, in both these cases, the gas molecules will essentially fill the entire volume. So they, 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 uh, the gas will rearrange its total volume to fill the container. And so that's these two. Liquid and gas are what we would call fluids because they can, um, they can flow and take the shape of their container. That's still not the most rigorous definition and we'll just come to that in a bit. Right now, actually. Um, so the exact definition of a fluid, the exact definition of a fluid is this, a material that deforms when exposed to an external shear stress of any magnitude so if you had um, if you had let's say two plates of either a solid or a fluid this fluid might be gas or liquid and let's say this solid, uh, you now had some kind of marker at different points. You had the same marker at different points. And now you apply an external force to the solid and you apply an external force to the liquid and you hold that force steady. With a solid, you will get hardly any deformation. Well, it depends on the magnitude of the force, but you know from deformable body mechanics that there might be some very small deformation um, and then the internal forces in the solid will resist uh, the motion and there will be an equilibrium deformation in the solid and there will be no further deformation. Whereas with a fluid, because it cannot ever resist any kind of shear stress, shear force, these markers will continuously deform. So long as you apply, keep that force applied, at different points of time, the stop surface will all, uh, cause deformation continuously so that the, uh, these markers keep getting pulled along. So that means the fluid everywhere internally is getting deformed continuously. And as long as you keep that force applied, you will get deformation. In a solid, you will not because at some point internal stresses will balance the external stress.